BP's chief executive is to stand down within the next 24 hours. The heavily criticized Tony Hayward is negotiating his departure after the oil spill crisis in the Gulf of Mexico. I think it was absolutely inevitable. Uh, we're, we're talking here of damaged goods. We're talking here of someone who is uh, a public enemy number one in, in the US. Organizers of the music festival in Germany, where 19 people died, say that it'll never be held again. In Afghanistan, NATO is accused of killing civilians in a missile strike. It denies responsibility, but says it's investigating. And Ferrari is fined $100,000 over illegal team orders, which allowed Fernando Alonso to win in Germany. For me, it was theft. They stole from us the opportunity of having a wheel-to-wheel -wheel contest between those two drivers. Ferrari should be ashamed of themselves. Good evening. BP's chief executive Tony Hayward is to stand down from the company within the next 24 hours. He's been heavily criticised for his handling of the oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico. A formal announcement on Mr Hayward's future is due tomorrow, as our business correspondent Joe Lynham explains. They have been the images which have filled our screens for over three months. And the face of this disaster has been BP's chief executive Tony Hayward. Apart from the environmental catastrophe, it's been a PR disaster as well for BP and its boss. There's no one who wants this thing over more than I do. You know, I'd like my life back. I wasn't part of that decision-making process. Again, I was not involved in decision-making. It's impossible for me to answer that question. You're not taking responsibility. You're, you're, you're kicking the can down the road and acting as if you have nothing to do with this company. I think it was absolutely inevitable. Uh, we're talking here of damaged goods. We're talking here of someone who is uh, a public enemy number one in, in the US. I don't think there was any way around this. That is not to say that he hasn't uh, attempted to do a brilliant job in, in clearing up the, uh, the well and getting it sorted out. The anodyne statement from BP headquarters here today said that Chief Executive Tony Hayward is still the boss. And that is, of course, true. But his tenure can now be measured in hours. He is currently negotiating the terms of his departure. Tomorrow, there's a board meeting here to discuss new leadership. And on Tuesday, BP is set to post the biggest ever quarterly loss by a British company. America's biggest ever oil spill has also been a business nightmare for BP since April. The cost of trying to cap the burst well could reach between three and six and a half billion pounds. On top of that, BP have promised to set aside 13 billion pounds to compensate firms and individuals affected by the spill, forcing down the value of one of Britain's largest companies by nearly 40%. And this is the man tipped to replace Tony Hayward. Bob Dudley used to run BP's operation in Russia and crucially for a company hoping to restore its image in its main market, Bob Dudley is American. BP will hope that he will be able to draw a line under this crisis, but even a new face will not be able to repair his predecessor's image within a few short weeks. Joe Lynham, BBC News. Well, with me now is our business editor, Robert Peston. Robert, in your view, why would Tony Hayward be leaving BP at this particular moment? Well, I learned earlier today that BP's directors agreed in an informal sense that... Uh, Tony Haywood would be leaving. It'll be ratified by the board in the next 24 hours. And the reason, actually, is that things are going a bit better for BP. It's out of crisis mode. It's now quite clear that, in a financial sense, it can survive. We'll get a quantification of the losses stemming from this extraordinary disaster in the Gulf of Mexico on Tuesday. A provision of about $30 billion, an astonishing sum of money, is likely to have to be made in respect to cover those uh, losses. And, you know, this temporary cap on the well is holding. There are signs that we'll know reasonably soon whether the permanent solution to the leak will be found. It's time for BP to make a new start. It needs a new strategy. And if it wants to build again, most people at the top of BP believe, including, as I understand it, Mr Hayward himself, they need a new leader. Robert, thank you. Robert Peston, our business editor. Now, in Germany, the organisers of the music festival, where 19 people died and hundreds were injured, say that the event will never be held again. Scores of people were crushed when panic broke out in a tunnel near the entrance to the Love Parade in Duisburg. Richard Slee reports. 24 hours after they left behind the terrible events here, people have been coming back to lay flowers and remember their friends who died. 
The investigation is likely to focus on what happened here inside the tunnel, the only way in and out of the festival site. These were the scenes a short time before the crush. But soon there was chaos, with people trying to get inside, meeting a flow of others who'd been turned back by the police because they feared the event was getting dangerously overcrowded. The result was a bottleneck and no escape for the huge crowd, except up the side of high walls. Those trapped at the entrance to the tunnel prevented emergency crews getting in to help people being crushed. Questions are now being asked about the suitability of this particular site, an old railway yard being used for the first time as a venue for Love Parade. I have to say that uh, just, just from seeing how many people were on the street yeah. and knowing how narrow this tunnel is, it was an accident waiting to happen. Uh, it was a very wild situation, uh, almost like a war. And uh, yes, and the police and the security